I'm Giulia Angonese and I welcome you to my talk towards an objective measurement of individual listening preferences, trait consistency and state specificity. Proper hearing aid fitting is crucial for user satisfaction and listening comfort and this fitting process includes a first prescriptive stage where information on the hearing threshold is collected and a fine-tuning stage involving measures at supra-threshold levels which often follows a process of trials and errors where the technician adjusts the settings according to the patient's complaints and needs. Despite being very time-consuming, this stage is crucial for user satisfaction and needs good individualization and personalization. Indeed, for proper fine-tuning, individual listening preferences should be considered. Volker and colleagues assume that individual sound preference judgments are based on different subjective traits, with individuals showing different preferences along three trade-offs intelligibility versus listening comfort, amplification preferences, and noise distortion preferences. On this, we will now elaborate further. The use of single microphone noise reduction algorithms in hearing aids introduces an important trade-off between noise and distortion. These algorithms provide an increase in signal-to-noise ratio by reducing the surrounding noise, but with this, they also introduce distortions to the signal. Here, we can here an example of a clean signal. Thomas hat sieben grüne Messer. Of the same signal with background noise. Thomas hat sieben grüne Messer. And with distortions. Thomas hat sieben grüne Messer. So these noise reduction algorithms are, however, an essential part of the hearing aid fitting process, since understanding speech and noise is one of the main challenges for people with mild to moderate hearing loss. But the problem is that at present, no measurement is available to determine noise reduction preference. So how can we measure this trade-off preferences for better individualized fitting? Previous studies have shown that Preference on acceptable noise level predicts pattern of hearing aid use with 85% of accuracy and that there is considerable inter-individual variability in preferred noise reduction settings for experienced hearing aid users and these preferences were found to be stable after one year. And with respect to the noise distortion trade-off, a measure to estimate this individual trait was first conceptualized by Fulker and colleagues and later implemented by Kubiak, who in her study with both normal hearing and hearing impaired participants identified three individual profiles, noise haters, distortion haters, and intermediate. In addition, she also found stability of these preferences over time in a test retest after one week and over listening scenarios, namely with different maskers and special conditions. With respect to potential predictors of these individual preferences, acceptable noise level was not seen to be associated with self-reports, while a relationship between noise reduction preference and putrid average was found, with higher PTA for individuals who prefer strong noise reduction. Finally, noise distortion preferences have been shown to correlate with speech reception threshold. So we can here conclude that noise distortion preferences have been found to be an individual trade, stable over time and modalities. However, time stability was only measured at test free test over one week and one year. But how about potential day-to-day -day fluctuations? Indeed, we know that other neuropsychological processes like cognition and hearing itself fluctuate over time within the individual. Moreover, up to now, these measurements of hearing preferences happened in a highly controlled experimental setting, but how about an ecological mobile assessment in the everyday life of the individual? Therefore, the aim of our study is to move towards an objective measurement of listening preferences that can be administered in a mobile app. We will assess a newly implemented mobile task and evaluate its psychometric quality and use this measure to evaluate stability of listening preferences along different days within the individual. For this, we collected data from 185 unaided individuals who reported subjective hearing difficulties. The study was conducted along three weeks, was entirely online on the mobile phone of the participants. In week one, the baseline included the assessment of, this, of different questionnaires like uh, demographics, sound preferences, personality, as well as the newly implemented noise distortion trade-off task. This task was repeated three times and preceded by a calibration and practice trial. 
The ecological momentary assessment measures that followed were spread along two weeks in the morning and evening. Here, participants were prompted by SMS to complete the assessment of noise distortion task once again, hearing performance and mood. These noise distortion tasks assess individual preferences in three listening conditions, each of them displayed in the form of a slider with nine discrete values. The participant was asked to move the cursor of the slider from left to right as much as needed to understand the speech with little effort. The three conditions and three sliders that made, each up, that made each task were a simple linear gain scenario to assess the comfortable SNR level, a trade-off scenario with gain at the expense of clipping distortions with a general SNR range, and again a trade-off scenario with an adaptive SNR range this time, based on the individual answer on the first slider to evaluate the subject-dependent trade-off. To classify noise and distortion meters, two measures were taken into account. The delta SNR between condition or slider 1 and 2, so linear gain versus general trade-off, and the delta SNR between slider 1 and 3, so linear gain versus subject-dependent trade-off. Noise haters would show a delta SNR close to zero, meaning that they desire to maintain listening comfort, so low noise, at the expense of signal quality. While distortion haters would show a positive delta SNR, meaning that they accept lower listening comfort, so higher noise compared to the sweet spot, to maintain better signal quality, so avoid distortions. And the following research questions will guide our analysis. First, we focused on the psychometric quality of the measurements and evaluated if measurements are consistent for different slider differences and which of the two deltas was the measure of choice. So both measures, namely delta SNR between condition 1 and 2 and condition 1 and 3, are measuring the same individual rank order. And the delta SNR between condition 1 and 3, so between linear gain scenario and subject dependent trade off, is the measure of choice, since it shows less within person variability. Then, having selected the most appropriate measure, we will evaluate trace stability and state related variance, and finally, we will see if a data driven categorization of noise distortion haters is possible. First, we will apply a latent state and trade multi level model framework with an estimation of autoregressive effects of each time point on the following. And then we will explore associations between state variance and DB mode and between trade stability and self-reports of sound preferences. Finally, a mixture model will be used for a data-driven identification of classes. The analysis of data at the moment is still ongoing, so we can't yet answer these last questions. However, from some preliminary data visualization, when looking at the overall sample distribution at baseline, we might already identify some individuals who are more noise haters versus distortion haters. And we can already see how some participants show quite clear preferences. Here, for example, we have a potential noise hater who showed similar preferences along the different longitudinal measurements here represented by triangles and participants with way more variability. For now, I thank you for listening and I will be happy to receive any question during the conference or via email.